even standing up to do the dishes or okay. vacuum your apartment. Okay, bro. Let's be honest here for a second, dude. Standing up and doing your dishes is exercise. Come on, Jordan, dude. I think we're I think we're stretching that. I, I think we're stretching the word exercise pretty far here. If this is how you're calculating exercise, I can see why you're still obese. Like if I'm moving my mouse around like this, right? Is that is that exercise? Because I'm moving my mouse around really, really quickly. What if I'm like getting out of my chair, I drop something and I, I come over here to pick it up. Is that also exercising? How far are we taking this exercise term, Jordan? Because this seems ridiculous at this point. The most annoying group of people to deal with as a fat person on the internet is not like the dude bros making fun of me and calling me fat in my comments. It's not ED Twitter taking my videos and making me fat spell, making fun of my body and everything about so that they can starve themselves to not look like- No, it's neither of those. The group that is most annoying and irritated is the morally superior anti-fat activists that take fat people's content from TikTok, cut it up, upload it to TikTok, making money off of our face, our content, our, our movement, I would really love if Victoria would come on with me, dude. I would love to do a live stream or even just a video where she could, you know, perfectly articulate whatever she could do. You know, she could record her as well. I just think that it'd be tremendously beneficial for both of us, given the fact that she's calling me out, obviously indirectly, but even still calling us out for, I mean, let's be honest for a second. Anything Victoria says, I always give Victoria and most of the people within the fat acceptance community the benefit of the doubt. I am the most generous person when it comes to understanding their quorums with the rest of civilization. By the way, I want to apologize to anybody that hears banging downstairs. These dudes have been working down there for what seems to be to me like over a month at this point, And I don't know why 85% of everything they do has to be exactly right below where I am currently. But that's just kind of like how it goes. And I keep having to wait and wait and wait. And I go, I'm going to record it here, obviously, but I can't because I keep making noises and all this stuff. So I'm like, fuck it, I have to do it. I don't have a choice. I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm running out of time. So I need to do this now. So if you hear something in the background, I apologize for you. Um, I don't like usually like to complain um, unless it's with you guys. Uh, you guys understand me. This is how I vent. This is how I like get out my frustrations. So thank you for being here. And then also I want to thank Victoria too for being a beautiful candidate of amazingness that says the most diabolical, <laughs> hurtful, hateful shit whilst being under the guise of but I know I'm right. People taking my content and putting it someplace else, saying things that are real, saying things that are actually authentic and calling me out on my bullshit. I don't like those people. So anyway, let's hear her out. Cut it up. Upload it to TikTok. Making money off of our face, our content, our, our movement. Because either they were fat and hate themselves, are currently fat and hate themselves, or just hate fat people in general. Yeah, none of those things. I am none of those things. I have never been fat. I've never been fat or whatever and lost weight or... Uh, I don't hate fat people. I actually very much enjoy fat people. I mean, obviously, I'm not, like, going out of my way and patting them on their backs. But I also am not, like, going out of my way to also go, fuck fat people. Fat people are gross and disgusting. They smell like old French onion-filled socks. Nobody's. I feel like nobody's doing that. I don't hate fat people. I just have a problem with the words that come out of your mouth. Like, if you want to be fat, that's completely fine. There's literally no problem with you being fat. I mean, in the spectrum of, like, with if, if that's what you want to do. Obviously, there is something that's wrong with being fat you know, reducing lifespan and all that other stuff. But if you don't care about your lifespan and like how you look and how you act in society, then, you know, whatever, that's up to you, I guess. Right. But I don't hate you guys. I just have a problem with the words that you guys say. You have an, you have this like really weird issue in this like complex of like main character syndrome where you guys feel like you can say whatever you want. And then when you say whatever you want, for some reason, when people take that information that you say and go, Hey, wait a minute now, this actually doesn't make any sense. For some reason, you guys don't like that. That doesn't make any sense given the fact that you are able to post whatever you want to post. Do you just expect that nobody's going to say anything about the terrible, disgusting, blasphemous shit that you guys say on a daily basis on TikTok? Just because it's TikTok, and I get it, it's like a very, very liberal platform, which I, in and of itself, don't even have a problem with liberalism. The problem is that you guys have a very condensed platform. Like, the, the, the area on the internet that you guys reside in, which is TikTok, is a very, very safe space for you guys and i get it when people take your content and put it somewhere else where i don't know people are a little bit more um liberal liberal lou well, i don't even know the word would be there well people that are more open to more opinions then you guys have a problem with it you do realize that the words that are coming out of your mouth for the most part are like ridiculous right like they don't make any sense like if you guys genuinely want to be fat that's completely fine but just don't hate on the people that are looking at you and going this doesn't make any sense and then can actually articulate why this doesn't make any sense i have had so many of my videos taken and put on the internet to be made fun of by a group of people that yeah but you know what's really funny is like if you 
you upload anything on the internet, you have to at least expect to some sort of degree that that's going to be criticized. Or at least you should understand that at some point it would be, if that makes any sense. Like if you're a very, if you're somebody that's like, I don't know, somebody's mom, which I would never recommend doing this, by the way, um, to upload pictures of your kids or whatever. Like I know many, many parents that upload pictures of their kids and their, their kids are just out there going, don't upload pictures of me, mom. And their moms will go, don't tell them what to do, baby. I do whatever I want. Right. And that's not cool. That's not cool. I mean, maybe if they're like 18 years and above, probably okay. But like younger kids, probably not because like they can't really control that. And there's like ent literally entire organizations on the internet that literally fetishize children, right? But that's besides the point. I think that for somebody like Victoria, okay, she for some reason thinks that her videos should never be monetized or they should never be placed in another spot where she doesn't agree with. And I, I disagree. I disagree tremendously. I love your content, Victoria. Not only do I love your content, I love it so much that I feel the need to share it with all these amazing people, including you right now, the person watching it. You smell good person. Anyway. I don't know. That doesn't follow. And every single one takes my arguments in the worst light possible. And I think I would love to see like an actual like I believe I am the most generous person in this particular field when it comes to understanding these guys points I always approach it with nuance. I always see their both sides I'm never looking at it as black and white I always try to see it in the middle ground as much as I possibly can because oftentimes these people They'll like nine out of ten things. They'll probably agree on with right like you probably agree on everything This person agrees on with the exception of probably the sensitivities of those things, right? So when I hear these people saying the words that they're saying most of the time It makes sense within the context of their brain like how they're thinking about this stuff But it just kind of goes off the deep end so often because they they take one or two of those things and it's like it's super extreme Right, like I agree that fat people should be looked at as humans. But the way you like to look at it is like fat people shouldn't be acknowledged for their unhealthy weight. Like, do you understand that that's impossible? Like, I do agree that you guys are human beings, but then you also want me to acknowledge that you guys are healthy, which is crazy because that's not how that works. Like we literally have science and all this fact to back up that you guys are literally chronically unhealthy on a daily basis. You, can, you, you say things that are so ridiculously unreasonable. I would love to see who or where she's talking about the people, because I know she can't say that about me. I always am super generous when it comes to any of the things that she says. And every single one takes my arguments in the worst light possible. And makes me seem like I'm crazy, like I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, most of the most of the shit that she does say say is uh, pretty fucking crazy. But you know what? I don't want to sit here and claim that this person. I, I I really do feel like this person is just young. Now, if you're looking at Victoria right now, how old? I'm gonna <laughs> pause the video. I want you to write in the comment section right now. Now, if you know, you know. Uh, if you know, you know. But. I want you to answer this question. How old do you think Victoria is? How old do you think she is currently right now in this video? Go ahead, pause the video. No, she's not that. No, I don't care. No, even if you said the right age, you're wrong because you probably Googled it. Stop Googling things, okay? I think Victoria is around 21, 22, 23, under 25, I believe, something around that. I first started watching Victoria, I was convinced this woman was in her mid-30s. I thought she had a child that she was taking care of that was in like kindergarten or something like that. Husband type thing. And then, then I found out that she was in her 20s. And I was like, oh, damn, dude. Because sometimes you look at a fat person and you think this person is either very, very old or very, very young. And sometimes you can't even tell. And I don't mean very, very old, like Clint Eastwood old. I mean, like they look significantly older than they actually are. Like if you're 30, you're obviously still, you're obviously still young. But if you're 22 and somebody says you look like you're 30, that's not good. That's really not good. You know what I'm talking about? So it might be good, by the way, if you're like 35, and you look 22. It depends, though. Honestly speaking, it depends on what you're going for, but it doesn't matter. OK, it's probably better to actually look younger than it is to look older because most people want to maintain youth as as much as they possibly can. And you feel as you're only as young as you feel. Right. But these people are like chronically aging, like <laughs> way faster than they probably should be. But I think, for instance, for Victoria, she just lacks a lot of. I would say reality, like she has, le she has almost no human real world experience on a lot of this stuff, which is one of the reasons why I hear her say literally just blasphemous shit continuously out of her mouth. She just spouses it as if it's fact, when in reality, most of the shit she's saying literally doesn't make any sense in the slightest. It's in the worst light possible and makes me seem like I'm crazy. Like, I don't know what I'm talking about. Like, you know, I'm, I'm making everything up and then like search through your videos and try and like point out inaccuracies to look for some kind of proof that like fat people are all lying about being happy about themselves. They're all lying about being content in their body. And like, there's literally no room for nuance with that. And they all think that they're the good guy. 
Uh, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'm a good guy in the sense of like a gener generally speaking, but I definitely think I'm good, especially considering what you talk about. But I, I it, you know, it's really interesting is like, I think I probably hit up Victoria before on maybe like, I don't know what social media they hit up on, but it doesn't matter. I would love to have a conversation with any of these people. Like, I'm not just one of these people that's going to sit here behind the camera and just dispouse what I believe and never give another person what they a chance to talk about what they want to talk about. Dude, I'm totally DTF to talk about whatever you want to talk about. So if Victoria or anybody else wanted to come on live stream or even a video and talk about the things that they actually believe in, I'm perfectly capable of having a dialogue or even a debate with these people. But... For some reason, I wonder that why these people never actually want to have conversations with anyone outside the realm that they actually occupy. I wonder why. Could it have anything to do with the fact that most of their beliefs have to do? Most of their beliefs are so deeply entrenched within their ideology that the simple fact of somebody challenging them on them is like life-threatening type shit. Like there's no way these people can defend actually the words coming out of their mouth, which is 100% the reason why you never see these people going on any other podcast or like any any shows or anything like that. They always have to do it exactly on the people that are going to say yes or yes queen them, which is terrible, disgusting, because you should have the ability to test your beliefs against somebody else that doesn't believe what you believe, because how else are you going to how else are you going to know what you say is true, right? I mean, obviously, this doesn't affect you if you're, like, gay or whatever. Because I know there are a lot of gay men that are gay because they're gay. And a lot of people that are straight because they're straight. I'm not one of these people that goes, how do you know you're not gay unless you suck dick? I don't want to suck dick. Therefore, I'm not gay. I don't know what to tell you, dude. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? But when it comes to, like, having these, um, having these types of ideologies, it would be super very beneficial to have somebody to bounce opinions off of to see if any of your opinions actually stick. Because most of the stuff that Victoria says and a lot of these fat activists make zero sense. They have absolutely no background. They have they have no concrete. Their foundations on their beliefs are like literally held up on like tofu dreg projects from China. It's 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 so it's like so uh what's the word I'm looking for? It's not good. Okay, and I would love to talk to Victoria, but uh never gonna see it probably. Guy, that's the crazy th they make these videos take people's content out of context post it to a hostile audience and what do you mean a hostile audience dude it's just people that disagree with you I, or not even that sometimes it's not even people that disagree with you a lot of people in general just want to see what you're talking about and see if there's any validity to what you're saying if people deem that what you're saying has no sense or no backing then like it's not that they're hostile they're just taking the information and they're critically thinking something that obviously victoria has never done but she'll claim that she does which is very interesting because i i, I seriously doubt that Victoria has actually critically thought about these particular statements that she's had to say many, many times. They'll think that they are the good guy. That's the thing that's the most frustrating. Yeah, I'm, I'm like Michael Keaton. I'm like Michael Keaton's Batman, dude. And you're like Danny DeVito penguin. That's what it's like, dude. Come on, come over here, dude. You know what's up? Uh, I'm Batman, dude. I got the Batmobile, the cool Batmobile too. I don't care what anybody says. Michael Keaton's Batmobile, though impractical, though it was like 10 feet longer than any car on the street and only had like one rocket booster, it was still the coolest Batman car in existence. I don't care what anybody says. We can, I will die on this hill. There is not a sick, I don't care. I don't care. The newest Batman car was literally just like a Mustang from the 1960s that somebody put like a rocket boost on the back of it. Nope, it's gay. Um, Michael Keaton, M Michael Keaton's Batmobile, sexy, beautiful, amazing, a, a piece of craftsmanship. Whoever created that automobile deserves more praise than most when it comes to automobile designs. I know it doesn't make sense, and I'm dying on this hill. Like, they think that they're in the right. Like, you are a villain. You are a bad person. Yeah, I would love to talk to this person, dude. I would love to, man, because I genuinely think it would be a great conversation. You know, like, think about it. We both have thick eyebrows, right? We both wear black sometimes, right? Is this black? Hold on, let me just make sure. I don't we both wear black. It would be great. You know, we have so much in common. And I really feel like we do have a lot of common ground. Most people, when you have conversations with them, you will find common ground with them because most people roughly believe the same things. But... Um, for somebody like Victoria, I would love to have an actual dialogue about the things that she believes in. Leave me the fuck alone. This is... You can't say, you know, you can't say leave me the fuck alone while making a video specifically targeting these people that you don't like making these videos on. That doesn't even make any sense. How can you sit there, antagonize these people, and then at the end of the, at the end of it go like, stop, just leave me alone. Just leave me alone. Dude, you're not free of criticism. That's not how that works, okay? And... Most of the time, the people that are criticizing you are not even commenting on your physical appearance. They're literally just commenting on these blasphemous words that come out of your mouth. So if you genuinely want to know if your opinions are correct or you want to test them against somebody, I'm open, dude. I'm completely open. DMs are open. Hit me up on Instagram. Hit me up on Twitter, wherever. I think that they're in the right. Like, you are a villain. You are a bad person. Leave me the fuck alone. 
I'm a villain like Handsome Jack, except I got the handsome aspect, not the crazy, you know, carving out people's eyeballs with a spoon. Let me know if you know what that reference is down below. This is such a ridiculous comment. Y'all do anything except work out. This is a true ass statement, dude, especially when it comes to Jordan. But I think Jordan does do some exercises, but I think their definitions of exercises are incredibly very, very wide, man. Like, uh, if you can... Sure, I count walking as exercising, things like that. But, like, most people, when they think of exercising, they're not really thinking about walking. They're really thinking about, like, going to the gym, maybe hitting the cardio machine, maybe lifting some weights. Like, there's a very general understanding of what exercise is. But you can count walking and kind of a few other things as um, exercises. But most of the time, like, when you say I exercise and you go, oh, yeah, like, I walked for 10 minutes, people are going to go, oh, okay, um, sure, but that's not really exercising. Anyway. And normally, I would just delete it and, like, move on. I just really, you know what? I really feel like people like Jordan Underwood, it's really crazy, too, because Jordan is also a very young individual. I thought Jordan was, like, in their 30s. But I I get it. Like, you don't like the comments, therefore you're going to have to delete them because you don't like looking at the comments, maybe because it makes you depressed or something like that. I get it. But is that really, like... Does that really scream I am a, like, centered person? Like, I know I my beliefs really stand. Because, like, when you look at a comment like this, your first instinct is to delete it or make a video in response to it. How many of these comments do you get a day? Can we just talk about that for a second? Like, what is... Okay, whatever. But I keep... You can only do that for so long. It's like... Do you remember that time period where there was like a whole bunch of red pillars and anti-vaxxers all over YouTube and other social media platforms? Like for instance, Andrew Tate, that were all over these social media platforms. And like, it seemed like within the spirit of, within, within, the time, within the time frame of about one or two days, they all got banned off of all social media platforms all together communitively in like the, the period of a day, right? Or two days. That doesn't work because the idea still stands. You're just silencing these people's voices, but like it doesn't, it doesn't change the fact that these people are still saying what they have to say. And there's going to be other platforms that open up that breed this particular type of audience that's going to open arms for these people. Like Andrew Tate moved to Rumble, you know, Sneeko moved to Rumble, you know, all these people that spew out very toxic rhetoric that... Um, in my opinion, should be, they should have the ability to speak on. I'm not one of these people that sells, I'm not one of these people that thinks we should t shut people up because like th their opinions are bad or whatever the hell. That's, no, I don't care. I want everybody to say what they gotta say and I think that people should expose themselves so that way we can actually see what they actually have to say. You know what I'm saying? It's better. If you listen to somebody for long enough, they will tell the truth on themselves, right? And I think that the idea of like, cutting that particular bracket like it's an endless task because you cut out the andrew tate somebody comes up and rises up out of the ashes of andrew tate it's probably worse and we see this time and time again like you if you cut these people out it doesn't they don't just go away the message still stands so when it comes to like deleting comments that say the same shit over and over again eventually it's just going to come back and it's going to keep coming back it's going to keep coming back and i'm not saying you can't do anything about it but maybe that's Maybe you should look at those particular types of comments and maybe look at them a little bit deeper. See if they actually have any meaning behind them. Seeing comments like this, and I know it's like a trend of people saying this on videos of specifically like older women's workout classes. And I just find it so odd because like the full sentiment of this comment is like, why are you doing this instead of just like going to the gym and lifting weights or running? A lot of times when I see people that are working out or doing particular exercises i think why are you doing this because it makes no sense like i remember i was in the gym one time and there was a guy he was a really big guy he was a tall man he had to have been over six feet tall six foot two probably and he had to have weighed not even joking with you had to have weighed 500 pounds this guy was struggling to walk okay and i was just thinking this guy was in the gym and anytime i've ever saw him in the gym he wasn't doing anything like half the time he was just kind of leaning over on on the workout equipment and talking to people which is fine if this is like a social environment for you but most of the people he was talking to were not even people he knew he was just kind of approaching people to try to make friends which is fine but most of these people didn't want to talk to him because most of the people that are in the gym are not doing it as a social situation they're just going to the gym to work out and to leave you know what i'm saying like it's a in and out for a lot of these people but anyway the only time I've ever seen him work out, like I've never seen him touch the cardio machine ever, but I have seen this guy bench press. Um, he could bench press a lot of weight, which is fine. I think any movement is good movement, of course, but I also would sit there and tell this guy that um, this guy had been going, I remember I, I was going to the gym at this particular gym for five or six, seven, eight months. And I saw this dude, not every day, but every, probably every other day I went there and I'm thinking this guy has some pretty good consistency, but I never see him actually doing anything at all when it comes to going to the gym. Like he just kind of sits there and when he does work out, it's like maybe four or five reps gets up and then walks out of the gym. And I just think, 
I don't think the gym is the right place for you, right? I don't think you're actually doing what you're supposed to be doing in the gym. Like maybe, and obviously I would never tell that guy what he can and cannot do, but I always think about this stuff. Like I remember this one time I was at the gym and there was a guy that came in. He was like marine fatigues, right? He had boots on, which number one rule at the gym is you can't wear boots. And also you can't wear these particular types of pants that he was wearing, whatever. This guy came in. And I shit you not, he went over to the Smith machine and started dead, not deadlifting, sorry. He started um, squatting the, the Smith machine and like four or five girls came up to him and started asking like, where is he? Where is he commissioned? Whatever the fuck. And I'm just thinking, there's a time and a place. And obviously this guy is not here to work out. There was literally nothing on the bar. And when he did put something on the bar, by the way, it was a Smith machine, which is fine. You can, <laughs> you could squat on the Smith machine. I'm not hating on you for squatting on the Smith machine, but he wasn't even doing full sets. He was literally going down maybe a quarter of the way and going back up and then looking around and girls were coming over. And I'm just thinking, why are you even here? Why are you here if this is what you're going to do? Like some people just kind of go places for like the wrong reason. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't make any sense. It's like a, uh, that's like a straight man going to a gay bar to try to pick up like lesbians like what are you doing man it's not you're not gonna find anything you're looking here for but maybe i don't know what i'm talking about man but anyway it doesn't matter um i do agree though sometimes people do the unoptimal thing and it doesn't really make any sense sometimes when you look at it from the outside looking in but maybe in their own personal opinion it's like optimal for them Hang on treadmill or something and i'm sure you look at me and you not the treadmill oh man dude when i was watching uh glitter what was it late lasers glitters and lasers and she's going on a fitness journey right now which is crazy good amazing but like for some reason the doctor whoever her doctor is has convinced her that the best way for her to actually become healthier is to run and the woman weighs like 450 pounds which is crazy given the fact that you're 450 pounds and you're running your joints are literally rubbing together at a crazy rate it's not good like i would always recommend if you're going to be a somebody that's very very overweight and you want to do any form of cardio do get on the elliptical the elliptical is going to be the place the time and the place i know a lot of people think that it's gay or there's some kind of like homosexual intent behind being on the elliptical kind of like i don't know like i feel like people think when you look at a guy on elliptical he's wearing like a g-string and a crop top and the guy has his fucking hair is uh i don't know like frosted tip like your name is guy fieri no dude i'm just on there because i find it more comfortable to work out i work out predominantly only if you ever see me doing cardio uh, with the exception of walking obviously i'm only ever doing it on the elliptical because i find it super comfortable to be on the elliptical i just do it's just my preferred way of working out when it comes to cardio right i see so many fat people that run or jog or jump and i just think this is so terrible for your joints right and anybody telling you that this is what you're supposed to do is oh my god hurting you beyond belief hop on the elliptical go to swimming classes anything that's going to get you moving is great but there sometimes it just does a lot of damage to the joint and um for somebody like that dude you're gonna need like a knee replacement by the time you're like 25 or 30 anyway i mean it's just something i think a lot of people should touch on you think oh jordan like why are you the one telling us True. about fitness okay sure whatever but like the reality is that these comments are coming from the crowd of people who are like always saying that everyone needs to work out more and all this stuff usually you only need to work out for about six to eight hours a week and you can get that in really however you want to right i usually if i'm going to the gym dude i'm only in there for mm, not counting the cardio I would say I'm only in there for 30 to 45 minutes, dude. I'm literally doing what I got to do and I'm getting out of there. You don't need to stay in the gym for two, three, four hours. I remember when I first started going to the gym, I literally stayed in there for two, three hours at a time, which was crazy. I don't know what the fuck I was doing. I don't even know how I had the time to do that, but it's not practical. Like, what are you even doing in the gym for two, three hours? That's, that's ridiculous. Go in, get your workout, get warmed up, hit the reps and get out, right? Do your cardio and get out. It's not that big of a deal. But then when you see people working out in a way that they find fun and joyful, that is sustainable to them, then you also have something to say. It just depends. Like some people could be doing more and some people could be doing less. I think that it just depends on the person to person. And if you're working out and it's joyful movement to whatever you, whatever you are personally, I don't even understand what joyful movement is. I guess just beating off. I, for me, that's what it is. I, most of the time when I'm going to the gym, you think I want to do the squats and you think I want to curl this way. I mean, sometimes, but you know, like most of the time I'm going there because I know that I'm going to have to be responsible and this is a commitment for me. So I need to actually devote myself to do this. So I'm not doing it because it feels good, but I'm doing it because I know the outcome is going to make me a better person, stronger, more lubricated, um, more tasty, right? More delectable as, as a human being. And I know that's the reason why you're going. Most people are going to the gym so they can feel like they're better and, and they feel more lubricated. They get that pump right after right i know it feels good doesn't it it feels real good real good but um 
usually the things that don't feel the best usually have the best outcome. So like ask anybody that's into getting spanked or choked or thrown across the room, which is very copious. Like the amount of women I've met that are into that particular type of aspect is numerous. I've met way too many women, but I've never met a dude that was into that. That was uh, into getting beaten up. I don't know if that why that's a woman thing. I used to think that it was like a Fifty Shades of Grey thing, but I don't know because... I, I've only really dated a few women, but like all the women I've ever dated were, were those type of people. I don't know, it doesn't matter. If you really think that everyone needs to work out all the time. Or Not all the time. I just really think whenever people like Jordan have to make these claims, they, have to, they always have to go to the extreme ways, the extreme like out, like really outlandish, like crazy scenarios to try to make it seem like we're the crazy ones. Like, oh, you want us to work out all the time. I literally just said, I want you to work out for like 30 to 40 minutes. You're good more whatever the thing is that you're saying like you should be happy that people like these older women or like me a fat person are moving in ways that we find sustainable and joyful and fun i am happy i'm very happy jordan i'm so happy that you're moving your body and are things that we like to do i spent this past summer at a fat camp i know the book is forthcoming but one of the first things that they talk about there is that fitness and movement exercise by the way if you're going to a fat camp and they're and they're trying to tell you which i'm probably thinking that a fat camp isn't like a place where you lose weight i'm probably guessing this particular fat camp is for fat people advocating for fat people fat you know fat acceptance and things such and so forth so it's probably not going to give you very good information at all so i mean i'm, I'm already going if you're going into a fat camp expecting these people to give you good information when it comes to movement you're probably not going to the right place if you will, is not that's like going to a that's like going to a fish and be like, dude, <laughs> tell me how to walk real quick. I real deal need to know how to walk. You obviously have the encyclopedic knowledge on how to walk optimally. So can you real can you just like throw me down? Like just really show me how to do it. Show me, please. I need to know how to walk optimally. Can you can you show me how? It's a fish. It's not gonna know. Obviously, fishes don't know how to walk not just going to the gym it's going to a jumping on a trampoline class yeah nah dude don't do a jumping on a trampoline class what even is that jumping on a trampoline class what the fuck is that what there's a class to jump on trampolines man i think we have a pretty broad definition of what a class is dude and this is what i'm saying you're going to a fat camp and you're jumping on trampolines man r.i.p to those ankles man is not just going to the gym it's going to a jumping on a trampoline class it is going to a dance class it's playing with your kids it's going for a walk with sure. a friend even standing up to do the dishes or okay. vacuum your apartment okay bro let's be honest here for a second dude standing up and doing your dishes is exercise come on jordan dude i think we're i think we're stretching that i, I think we're stretching the word exercise pretty far here I think that is, is is a little bit too far. You're telling me, so if I do if I do my dishes for 20 minutes, I'm going, ah, man, I really did a good job for my exercise today. Oh, wow, I really built up a sweat from sponging down that cast iron skillet for two minutes. Wow, man, I can't believe I did that. I know you're not supposed to sponge down cast iron skillets, okay? I watched Cowboy Ken. I know how it works. I'm just giving an example. That's not the case, okay? Like, you can count that. Vacuuming your apartment is kind of crazy as well. Normal household chores, if, Jordan, come on, listen, walking, sure, that's, <laughs> sure, you can count walking as exercise, I'll give you that one, but if you're walking for 10 minutes, that's not really exercise, it might be for somebody at your weight, which, I mean, is probably really crazy, you're probably pushing literally like four or five times more than what I'm pushing, but still, like, you, you have a very broad definition of what exercise is, and I think this is where the issue lies, because you have such low if this is how you're calculizing exercise, I can see why you're still obese. I can see why. Because you're you're counting everyday activities as like exercise. And it's like that one woman that was like, I'm, a, I'm just such a good girlfriend. Like I'll make you, you know, I'll run your shower and I'll listen to your feelings. And I'm just thinking, yeah, I mean, isn't that what you're supposed to do in a relationship? Like I didn't know that that was like something that a good girlfriend should do or like this was like an optimal thing. I just kind of always assumed that like if you were in a relationship and somebody would say, hey, can you run the shower for me? You go, okay. Hey, can you make me food? Okay. In the same sense of like, if can you imagine somebody going like, hey, do you want to go to the gym with me later? And you go, oh. I already went to the gym. You're like, oh, really? What'd you do? I did the dishes. Like, oh, 
oh really okay yeah that's de that's definitely that's wow you really did a good job for yourself washing those dishes how many calories did you burn when you washed those dishes like five wow five whole calories huh good job and what were you eating like oreos and oatmeal cream pies while you were doing it okay yeah no you're good you're good dude completely fine a-okay counts as movement because you're moving your body dude if you're counting this as movement i guess like then again then you gotta look at somebody beating off for 45 minutes as movement too like I, I, man, these people, I, like, what about me? Like, if I'm moving my mouse around like this, right? Is that, is that exercise? Because I'm moving my mouse around really, really quickly? What if I'm, like, getting out of my chair, I drop something, and I, I come over here to pick it up? Is that also exercising? How far are we taking this exercise term, Jordan? Because this seems ridiculous at this point. You guys have a, such a lax definition on this shit. The same thing could be said with, like, fat phobia. You guys literally count fat phobia as, like, somebody, oh, that person can walk up the stairs at a, at, a, at a pretty good speed. That's fat phobic. Or, like, okay, whatever, Jordan. Or buying two plane tickets for you guys and somebody that's thinner only has to buy one. That's fat phobia. You guys are ridiculous. This is why nobody fucking listens to you. With and different types of movement are good for your body in different ways. We know this. Yeah, sure. You know, you beating that shit off a little bit. You might, you might get the beat off blisters. You know what I'm talking about? Maybe that's a benefit for you. Yoga is great for flexibility. If you're, if you're pushing 350 and you're talking about some flexibility, what are you flexing right now, dude? You don't, I don't even know if you have joints anymore. Yeah. Okay. And improving mobility. If you have issues with that. If you, if you're over here trying to promote more mobility, like you're trying to be more mobile and your number one, the number one thing that you should be doing is weight loss, and you're not doing that. Instead, you're doing yoga. That don't make sense. That don't make sense. Uh, dance classes are great for cardio and building stamina. Lift sure. Oh, man, dude. Oh, man, dude. Stretching that term way too far. Sting weights is great for building muscle mass. It depends. It depends, Jordan. Like, it's great for building muscle mass, but for somebody at your weight, you shouldn't be concerned with any of that stuff. You should be trying to lose weight. Like, yeah, okay. Jumping on a trampoline no. or doing aerial yeah, Jumping on a trampoline is good for breaking your ankles, dude. I mean, think about this for a second. When you have these very small joints on your ankles, right? Because that's what they are. They're very small joints. The more weight that you have on the top half of your body from, from your ankles up, that's going to amplify the weight. It actually multiplies the weight because of how small, how small the joints are. For instance, you know bullets, right? Bullets are not powerful because they're a little piece of metal moving through the, through the, through the, uh, through the air, right? You know, when you shoot a gun, for instance, when you shoot a gun, the, the, the bullet, the, the, what is it? The recoil from the bullet pushes back on you. You're feeling all of the momentum that the bullet is pushing forward. Cause every, according to Newton, Newton's law, right? Any force any force that pushes against you must push in the opposite direction. So, for instance, when you push your hands on the table, the table is pushing equally right back upon you with the same amount of force. So, when you shoot a bullet, the recoil strikes back on your hand, and then the bullet itself is traveling with the same amount of force that was pushed upon your hand. But the difference is, the bullet is being... All the force of the bullet is being put on a very small point, okay? Which is one of the reasons why when you slice something with a knife, because you're slicing it with a very, very small point, okay? You're pushing it with the with very slight with a very slight pressure, but it doesn't matter because it's such a small point that it's gonna force its way through it, right? So when you shoot somebody with a bullet, the bullet is very small, therefore it's gonna cause more damage, it's gonna impact because the bullet is all compacted in one area in the same way that your ankles and your knees are, okay? Like they're pushing on all sides. So when your body's pushing down, the earth is also pushing up and you're also getting the outward and inward uh, pressure as well, consistently, all the time. So when you're stacking 300 pounds, maybe even 400 pounds, you're literally, probably multiplying that weight by double or even like multiple times on your ankles and knees, which is one of the reasons why these people always, by the time they're 30, have to get like knee knee replacements. Their ankles are perpetually fucked. They have t tons of problems with their shoes and feet. Like it's obvious. You guys are literally suffering from the negative effects of your obesity in ways that you don't even understand. Yoga or doing a bungee fitness class all have their own benefits. And it's just too laxed. Like it's way too laxed, man. Ultimately, like, I don't know why you guys care so much. These comments just like do not make sense to me. But I want you to be healthy. And I think that it's great that you're exercising. But if you're literally telling me that doing dishes is exercise for you, you lost. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you than that. 
If you're telling me that vacuuming the floor is exercise, you've lost the plot. You don't even understand what exercise is at this point. That could, it's a very, very broad idea of what exercise is, sure. But that's like me going, that's like somebody going, I'm hungry, do we have any food? And I go, go outside and suck the moss from the rock because that's technically food, sure. It's technically food, but would you ever consider it sucking the rock texture as, as a food, as some type of like sustenance for your body? No, you're never going to do that, okay? It's just like it's such a weird way of trying to like, it's such a weird way of trying to make it seem like you're doing more than what you're actually doing. Like if somebody hits you with, are you exercising and you say, oh, yeah, I do dishes, they're going to look at you and laugh because that's ridiculous. And they're going to go, oh, you weren't playing. Oh, you weren't playing? Oh man, okay. I can't talk to you anymore because you are, you might be like, cognitively cognitively de-inclined because they seem so counter to your own messaging you mean how everybody you, everybody's messaging everybody's messaging nobody considers doing dishes as exercise no one as like you all describe okay it. jordan yeah we're the weird ones me and you right now we're you watching this video we're weird because we don't consider doing dishes as exercise which really makes me think that it is just repackaged misogyny misogyny which what oh because women are in the kitchen more is that what it is because women wash dishes more is that what it is dude i've been in a lot of relationships and i've you know what i'm gonna keep it a bucket you okay don't tell anybody this don't tell anybody this i actually enjoy doing dishes i find it comforting because i can sit there and i can listen to my phone while i do dishes and i love just like looking at the stuff and going like this like making sure that it's clean i love doing that i love doing dishes is that the woman in me coming out i don't know but it doesn't matter i'm getting in touch with my feminine side by doing dishes and you know what it's also exercise now so i'm actually i don't even know i think i guess i burned like four or five calories while doing it you can't tell me that i'm not a skinny legend all right, from doing my dishes to waking up in the morning, I burned 15 calories, dude. I'm a, whew, I can't believe the amount of calories I just burned today. Can you believe that? No, I don't know. What the, what, I don't even know what the misogyny even comes from, dude. She's stretching. This is like, if you're talking about the stretching that she's doing, this is the only stretching I'm ever going to see her do. She's real deal trying to make it seem like whatever you're saying right now, which is like, go to the gym and actually work out is misogyny, which is crazy. Which really makes me think that it is just repackaged misogyny without any sort of purpose. Y'all just want to make other people feel bad. Why is it misogyny though? Where are you even getting that from? What? Where, where is that even coming from? What? Misogyny of everything? And make yourselves feel superior for the fact that you... I don't feel superior. I just look at your definitions and go, that doesn't make sense. That's not superiority. That's logic. Like, go lift weights. It's very weird. Okay. Can we just let people live? Yes, we can just let people live. But then you also have to understand that if you post something on the internet, you can't expect people to not look at that and go, wait a minute now. I don't think that makes any sense. Again, this uh, is just like a, a seems like a fat person problem. I don't know why these people have such an issue posting things on the internet and a problem when people say something otherwise. You want to know what's fat phobic? The photo booths. And here's why. Nobody uses these anymore, dude. I remember one time when I was a kid, I was at, I think it was downtown, and there was a photo booth here in one of the food courts, right? And I walked into the food court and um my mom my sister and all these other people right we were there with it was like a, we were it was like a family event right and we were going to take a photo in the in the thing i remember uh i was first and i opened the blinds to take a picture right and i saw i didn't know it at the time but there was a it was a used condom on the seat slopped over and it was dripping and i was like what is that and then my mom looked at it she was like oh yeah no we can't no nah, just um we ain't gonna do that we can't we can't really do that right now so i don't know if it's like the optimal place to have sex with somebody in a photo booth i guess maybe it's kind of cool in the sense of like oh yeah we're gonna take pictures of ourselves while we have sex but couldn't you just do that while you're like having sex you know what i'm saying like you're getting slopped off and you're like you know you're like what oh my god you know like something like that no i guess it's not as cool because technically it's in a photo booth and it's in public so i guess Personally, I've never been actually attracted to having sex in public. I don't want to get arrested. I remember I knew this one girl. She was like, I'm going to suck you off on the Avengers premiere. And I was like, I'm okay. I'm really okay. Like, that shit's going to be packed, dude. I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to, you know. But I know there are people that do get sucked off in movie theaters, which is like, out of all the places you get sucked off, I never thought a movie theater would be the one. I remember this one girl said I was a bitch 
because I didn't want to get, um, I, she didn't want to, she was like, oh, I'm going to suck you off in the grocery store. And I was like, I, I don't want to, like, I'm not really, maybe you won't get arrested, but I will. And I'm not trying to get kicked out of an establishment. And she was like, are you a bitch? And I'm just thinking, yes, yes. If that's what you want to hear, I'm a bitch. I'm a full bitch. I'm not trying to get arrested. I'm sorry, but it's head. I don't care if it's head. What are you talking? What? Dude, okay, whatever, man. Sometimes people have, like, very weird ideas of what is and what is not hot. And I get it. You're doing it in public, so it's a little bit more hot, you know? I don't know. Like, the worst place I've ever done it was, like, in a in a changing room, right? At a – I think it was a uh, J.C. Penney's or something like that, dude. But I, 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 I ordinarily wouldn't do that. It was Valentine's Day. I mean, you, you, you do things for the person that you're with, right? And in this particular scenario – them calling me a bitch, I'm just thinking like, yeah, I'm a bitch. I'm sorry. I'm just not trying to get sucked off right now. I'm not really into it. I don't even think I would be physically able to get an erection. I'm lying. I'm always I'm always bricked up 24-7. Only one fat bitch fits in here. Damn, that's crazy, dude. You really call this Mexican man a fat bitch? That's crazy. Her words, not mine. That's crazy as hell, dude. This is a weird problem to have. Like, only one fat person could fit on this thing at one time? Yeah. We tried to both get in, and I got stuck. That's <laughs> Crazy, dude. <laughs> you got this. <laughs> My four-year-old. That's just sad. I get it. Like you're posting, it's supposed to be funny. And you know what? Of all the people. Uh, in the fat acceptance community, the fat the fat community, this is one of my favorite ones. I, I, this person is so unique and they are so personable. So I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe it was just a joke. But even still, it's not funny to be laughing at the fact that you have to, you know, slide in and out of the, the photo booth and you can only go one deep. Uh, but then again, nobody really uses photo booths anymore. So I guess it's a unique problem to have. He's worried about being fat. <laughs> my four-year-old is worried about being fat. Was getting at least somebody is right at least somebody is four years man you know what i you know what i hate nowadays it's like people put so much pressure on children you ever realize that where they go oh i'm gonna let my kid choose their agenda i'm gonna let my kid choose this and this and this and i'm going how old's your kid and like oh my kid is three and i'm like what? three like being an adult i can't even i can't even uh, you know, do my own bed. I can't make my own bed. You want this dude to choose his gender, what he's going to eat. And like, I feel like these people put way too much, like you have to be a parent. You know, I get it. It might be hard to be a parent. And especially the ways that people are raised nowadays and attention spans that are literally like five. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like your attention span is constantly on like nine different things at any given point in time. I understand that. But dude, a four-year-old isn't going to know anything. When I was four years old, I, th I thought, I, th I think I thought I was Michael Keaton's Batman, or I thought I was like, obi-wan kenobi or something like that like i didn't really know anything or like donkey kong dude i didn't know shit and that's okay because i was fucking four you need somebody in your life to tell you no you're not donkey kong no you're not gonna eat that no we're not eating fruit roll-ups for breakfast i'm sorry that's just what it is that's what it's called being a parent getting her ready this morning and told her that she should layer a short sleeve what do you mean she should layer are you not dressing your four-year-old Dude, okay, bro. I mean, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, dude, but I'm pretty sure when you're four years old, you don't really even know what you're wearing because if you let a four-year-old decide what they were going to wear, they would just probably wear, like, the weirdest shit in the world, like, wrap themselves in toilet paper or something like that. It, usually what you want to do, if you want them to be, like, a person that actually – to be more responsible, which is a very weird age to do it, I guess – put. Pick out the clothes for them and go. Put these on, honey. You're gonna be so. You're gonna so. You're gonna look so great today. This is exactly what you're gonna wear. It's gonna be awesome. You wear this. You're gonna do this, right? You can put it on yourself, right? Let me know if you need any help. That's what you do. You don't go. Hey, I think it's gonna be cold kind of today. Uh, you know, you should probably just put on a double, double it up, double it up because it's gonna be kind of cold. What are you talking to the kid like that for? What do you? What are, is that your boss? Like, what do you? Who is this? Long sleep because it's cold outside, and she said, "Mom." But then people are going to think that I'm fat. Okay. And just like everything in me sank and I held it together and I was like. You're about to cry over that shit? Dude, get, what are you fucking, you're an adult? What? Dude, what are these people talking about? How can they, I mean, how can you say this stuff and think it's normal? Your four-year-old said that she's going to think, or whoever it was, man or boy or whatever, girl or boy, thought that they were going to be fat because they, why didn't you just go, oh, no, you're not fat, so you're good? Like, what are you talking about? How are you going to get emotional over something that happened? Dude, am I wrong? Am I fucking wrong, dude? If you're like a mom and your kid asked you if they wear this, or am I going to be fat, and your response is to cry, 
is that a normal human being response? That's like me going to like McDonald's and going like, yo, can I get a hot coffee? And they go, oh, we're out of coffee. And I start, I just start bawling on the fucking floor in fetal fucking position because they don't have any hot coffee. What are you talking about? Be, be an adult. It's okay that your kid thought they were going to be fat. You know, when I was four, I probably told everybody that was like Donkey Kong or like Obi-Wan Kenobi or something like that. You know what they did? They didn't, they didn't sit down on the floor with me and cry in a fucking fetal position because I was Obi-Wan Kenobi. I wasn't. I wasn't. I just needed you to tell me I wasn't. Okay, well, all right, man. Maybe I don't know what I'm fucking talking about, given the fact that I'm not a parent. But it always kind of seems like, I don't know. Like These people just, they say things that are just, like, unfathomable to me. It's like everything in me sank, and I held it together. And I was like, being fat doesn't mean anything. I'm fat. And I'm super awesome. I'm fat and I'm pretty. I'm fat and we have fun. Dude, what, are you, what is this insecurity, dude? What, what are you fucking doing? What are you sniffing the copium to try to convince your daughter? What the fuck are you doing right now? What, what is this thought? What is this thought process? Who are you trying to convince? What? What are you talking about? Is this what you say to yourself before you go to sleep every single night to try to convince yourself that you're not ugly? What are you saying? You're a mother. Get your shit together. What is this shit? This is fucking weird. And like you can still be awesome and have fun and do things when you're fat and it doesn't matter what other people think about us and I said something to that effect and I was just like rambling and scrambling and trying to figure it out and like I have done everything that I possibly could to talk about my body in a positive way to talk about other people's bodies in a positive way to not talk about other people's bodies to talk about what we do as people and not what we look at and it still got to her through friends and do she's four She's four. You know that? You know what that means? Single digits, literally less than five. And you're crying because your four-year-old said something that was, you know, man, I don't know, man. I feel like, I feel like we probably lost a little bit of ourselves in the last 20 years or so because this isn't normal human being activities right here. I don't know how she, what are you doing right now? You're on TikTok crying about how your four-year-old said that she, she thought she looked fat and now you're crying about it because maybe she thought that she thought that it was not a good thing and you're fat and then that somehow means that you're ugly or something. What are you talking about? What is wrong with you? What are you saying right now? Are you okay? Are you all right to be the parent? Are you okay right now? Is there somebody else raising this kid? Can you? That's not normal. This isn't, this isn't normal, okay? I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. This is not something a, a, an adult, let alone a parent should be even like, what do what you, what is this like? I was trying, I was trying really hard to try to convince her that there was nothing wrong with being fat and fat people are beautiful and this and this and this and this. Bro, it's a fucking kid. It's a child. It doesn't know anything. Why are you trying to convince the child so hard? What are you trying to do? What are you fucking convincing yourself? Can somebody sit and please let me know down below. Am I wrong? This is weird, right? This is weird, right? And TV and what is this world that we live in? Okay, dude, first of all, man, I don't know how comfortable you are raising children, dude, but this is not like, what do you mean? Okay, whatever, dude. That my four-year-old. Yeah. Yeah, keep in mind, four, 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 not 14, not 24, no, four, a toddler, a baby. Is worried about being fat. Dude, kids at that age are worried about everything, dude. You ever talk to a fucking kid? Dude, you talk to kids, okay? They just come out of nowhere sometimes. They just come out of nowhere. Did you, did you know that, did you know that my dad, did you know that my dad has diabetes? Did you know that? Did you know that? And it's like, what are you talking about, bro? What do you have to do with anything? Like, what do you, what? And I remember one time I was talking to this girl and she was like, oh, David, me and you are both wearing gray. Cause I wear gray a lot. Right. And she was like, we're both wearing gray, you know, twinsing, whatever. And this kid this because she's a teacher okay so she has to take care of kids she babysits and stuff like that this kid comes out of nowhere out of nowhere a b conversation comes out of nowhere and goes did you know that what time you know what time a few weeks ago did i have wore all gray what type two it's like okay bro what the fuck are you doing here right now why are you trying to be a part of this you're not a part of this dude what are you why are you here right now why are you trying to act like you're it's not, it's not for you you know and kids are just they just do shit you know they just say things sometimes and I don't know why you would take any type of, like, did you think this guy was like Aristotle or something like that? Like, we we're going to like document the words of this four-year-old child and write them down somewhere on some kind of hieroglyphics or something like that. Like the words of the wise four-year-old. Dude, it's a fucking four-year-old. Maybe I'm being like ageist right now, but I'm not really taking anything a four-year-old says to heart. You know, it's a fucking four-year-old. You don't know shit. You're a fucking four-year-old, dude. All right, man, whatever, man. 
Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Somebody help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Is this woman normal? I don't think so. This is a weird person. This person, to me, off this one video, I'm sure she's a great mother. I'm sure she is. But given the scenario we're talking about right now, not a good, not, not, not pulling in the right direction. That my four-year-old is worried about being fat. How do we save them? I remember when I was like seven or like maybe I wasn't seven. I don't know how old I was, but I remember I used to see those old commercials. You know those old commercials on TV where they used to go, a child in need needs a donation. Donate $1 a month to help save these children. These, uh, these children will be bald and they would have cancer. And I assumed that if you were bald that you had cancer. Okay, and I remember there was a kid that had alopecia in my school, and I remember going to school, and I saw this kid, and because I connected the dots, I said, okay, kids that have cancer are bald, therefore this kid has cancer, and I remember going up to this kid, and I was like, dude, I'm sorry, like, I didn't know that, how long, you know, I don't know how old I was, like, how long do you, how long are you going to live, and I was just thinking, like, dude, it really sucked that your parents put you in school, given you're only going to last, like, a week or two, right, and um, this kid was like, what do you mean? And I was like, you got cancer. He was like, what? I do? And I was like, yeah, you're bald. And he was like, what do you mean? I was like, well, you, you're, that's what happens. Like, if you're bald, then you have cancer. And then he was like, I do? And then he went home and he told his parents, I don't know, but I didn't see him for like two days after that. But uh, he was good after that. We never talked again, though, obviously, because you don't, you know, I was probably a fucked up kid at the time. I convinced this kid that he had cancer. He didn't have cancer. He was just alopecia. He didn't have eyebrows or anything, right? But I thought, I thought he did. I didn't know. I was like, I was young. I didn't know, okay? The point I'm making is when you're young, you say stupid stuff. And you are stupid because you don't understand how the world the, the world works as you get older and you start, like, <laughs> gathering. I don't even know why I have to explain this. I don't know. Like, you know. You know. The point I'm making is when you're a young person, okay, you're not going to, you're not going to know. Even when I was like, dude, when I was like 15 years old, I thought Jamaica was a part of Africa. I didn't know, okay? The point I'm making is. Why are you putting so much emphasis on what your four-year-old four said to you, dude? It's a four-year-old. How do we save them? Be a better mother, dude. I don't know, man. Come on. And that's us. That's what we grew up with. That's what? That's in us from when we were that little. <sighs> what do we do? Shut up. How do I fix this? What do we do? Shut up, dude. I have no words. Eat less, eat, eat less dude. That's all I gotta say. Just... What do we do? Cringe, dude. I'm fat, so... That was the worst. That was really bad, man. I'm sorry for that one. Anybody that saw that whole thing, I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry. I make sure that I'm never the first one to suggest that we go out to eat. I'm fat, so... I'm not gonna take a second helping until someone else does. Or just don't take a second helping in general, dude. What the fuck are you talking about? You don't need a second helping. Why does it matter if somebody else took a second helping? You don't need that second helping. You just told me you're fat, you're good. I'm fat, so I'm always going to check and see if a chair can hold me before dude, I sit down. I'm sorry, dude. These people are real deal. They deal with some, they deal with some of the craziest, the craziest shit I've ever heard in my life. How you gonna be looking at chairs and judging the structural cap capability of a chair uh, am I gonna break that shit? Uh, I don't know. I did break like five of them last week, and this one kind of looks a little bit more durable. I don't know. Like, why would you ever deal with this? Why can't you just lose weight? I don't understand. I don't understand, dude. Why living your life on hard mode just for hard mode's sake? I'm fat, so I'm gonna ask for a seatbelt extender on the airplane. Fat. I'm fat, so... Most necklaces aren't gonna fit me. You don't even have a neck. What are you talking about, man? It's it's like it's crazy to me with these people. You need now you need a seatbelt extender, now you need a necklace extender, and you probably need a seatbelt extender for your car. Like it just you know, all these problems are just things that I I real deal feel like why would you ever want to deal with them if you didn't have to? And I, I she's young, it seems like she seems she's able bodied. You can't lose weight? It's not possible for you? It's just not possible, huh? Okay, whatever, man. Without an extender. I'm fat, so most people who are attracted to me view it as a fetish. Yeah. I'm fat, so I have a bad relationship with a lot of the older women in my family. I'm fat, so if I'm uncomfortable or meeting someone new... Not a good angle, dude. Uh, you know, when you're fat and you lay down, it's not a good angle. I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. I'm gonna have a pillow over my stomach. I'm fat, so I'm never going to assume someone's attracted to me or ask someone out unless they make it clear to me that they're interested. Just lose weight. Just just lose weight. That's really what it comes down to, man. 
I don't know what else to say to that. You, you're literally living your life on hard mode right now. Like, if you started up a game and you click new game, you're scrolling all the way down to that hard mode, dude. You're making sure that every aspect of your life is just fucked. But whatever, man. Yeah, if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. All right, anyway. All right, we're going to end the video here, guys. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all of those things I'd appreciate tremendously. Uh, if you want to become a member of my channel, you can by clicking the subscribe and then hitting the join button that comes up right after that. And you get a whole bunch of benefits like, I don't know, supporting me and becoming a part of me like a weird symbiote kind of thing. Like we're, we're one person now. Like thank you for taking that chance on me. Um, I want to thank anybody that is a member and thank you for having that commitment to be with me for the rest of your life. And then also, thank you for anybody that's subscribed. I appreciate you tremendously. Uh, we do live streams on this channel uh, every day past 6 o'clock, usually. Not Mondays and Tuesdays. Very busy those days. But usually every other day, probably around 6. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in hot sauce. Don't ask me why I have hot sauce in here. Don't ask me why. Sometimes you just – I'm not black, okay? I'm not, I'm not putting it on women's toes. I'm not drizzling it on there and just – I'm not doing that, okay? I don't suck women toes. But I would if it was like something that – if I had a special missus that did want that. I wouldn't be – bro, if you're washing your toes properly and you were like, David, come here. Put, put your mouth on my toes. I'd be like, yeah. Whatever, dude. It's not a big deal. I don't care. What do you – don't look down at me at like that, dude. It's completely fine to suck a woman's toes if that's what you want to do. There's absolutely – is whatever. Like I've done worse, right? I've peed in a girl's mouth before. That's way worse than sucking on woman toes. But it doesn't matter. Speaking of toes, your toes are quite delectable. I'm not, like I said before, I'm not even really into toes at all. I don't like them at all. But your toes, when I look at your toes, I just couldn't help but to salivate. Not because I wanted to lick them, but because of the pure and beauty, the eminence, the bliss that emanates off of your toes is uh, pure, devastatingly beautiful energy. And the way that you cater to them, the way that you lubricate them, your kneecaps, how beautiful they are, even the back of your kneecaps, you know, the, the back, you know, the joint part or whatever, the back of the whatever. That is oh, beautiful as well. Very beautiful the way that it moves and the way that you move your body to ensure that to be healthier and healthier and healthier every single day. It's so good. It's glorious. I love every inch of your entire everything. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. If you want to check out any of my social medias, will be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, Twitter, Discord, and second channel. If you want to check out any of that stuff, feel free to do so. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.